Hello everyone, and welcome back to another recap. Today we're going to be covering the Canadian horror film The Void, released in 2016. Guys, prepare yourselves for this one. It's a serious trip, so don't say I didn't warn you. Anyway, let's enter The Void. And no, not the 2009 movie. That was a pretty crappy pun. <laughs> Alright, let's get into the video. The movie begins rather abruptly in a spooky house. And oh, there's already a dead body over there. I think it might be the 70s or the 80s, it's pretty hard to tell. Hey, who's this guy and why is he running like a crazy person? I think his name is James. Anyway, so some woman is screaming and oh boy, she is pretty loud. She runs out of the house and whoa, she gets shot by this guy, who's called the father apparently, and he's with this guy called the son. Yes, those are their names as per IMDB. They pour gasoline all over her. <laughs> Take it easy, man. She wasn't that loud. Anyway, dude, come on, just shoot her again and make it quick. Don't burn her like that. Dear God, the father is a savage. The son doesn't even look comfortable with it. Yeah, it looks like daddy's setting a bad example there for his kid. God damn, the father actually sets her on fire with his cigarette and just stands there as she burns. That's so cold. <laughs> Get it? Anyway, one thing's for sure, these guys aren't messing around. Hey look, there's one of the Squid Game guys. Oh wait a sec, this movie's from five years ago. So the credits roll, and there's some pretty chilling visuals, and a serene background score. It's pretty good stuff. We're introduced to the main character, he's a cop named Daniel Carter, and he seems to be flirting on the job. Yeah, that might not be the right way to do your duty there, buddy. Hey, there's James, he's made it through the woods. Daniel checks up on him and oh man, he doesn't look too good. He takes James to the Marsh Country Memorial Hospital where his wife Allison works. You just know some shit is gonna go down. It just has that kind of vibe to it. James seems to be bleeding and is taken away. Okay, now we get introduced to some of the side characters, and of course, there's Night of the Living Dead playing in the background. George A. Romero really should have gotten a lawyer back then. Or well, if he had one, maybe a better one. Anyway, there's Kims, who is showing a patient some science pod that she really doesn't want to see. Hey, stop that, Kim. Yeah, she's not too good with the jokes either. It seems about right that she's in training. Hey, did she just steal the poor guy's dessert? <laughs> she's such a millennial. <laughs> That's a pretty rough self-burn there. Uh, we get introduced to another couple of characters. There's very pregnant Maggie and her granddad, Ben. They seem like nice people. I mean, Maggie sure as hell can't be a threat, right? James is having a hard time and Dr. Richard says that he can't do much right now. Man, look at those needle marks. James is a serious junkie. Kim continues to show why she shouldn't be employed here, and we're also introduced to Beverly. She seems cool, right? Daniel does a bit of awkward flirting with Allison, and oh man, the sparks are really there. Richard interrupts them and tells Daniel that he should be really careful with Allison, since she's recently lost their child and recalls how he lost his own daughter too. We get some The Shining vibes in the next few shots, and then Daniel notices something really weird going on with Beverly. Wait a sec, what is she... Dude, what is she doing? Oh no, she killed that poor guy. He didn't even get his dessert. Man, Daniel echoes my sentiment and then she shows him her peeled off face. Ugh. But say some weird stuff like, this is not me. Yeah, no shit, Beverly. Dude just went from zero to a hundred real quick. She approaches Daniel and oh damn, he shoots her. Okay, well, that just happened. Everyone heads to the room after hearing the gunshot and of course, there's a lot of confusion. Daniel is a bit unsettled. I mean, yeah, he did just kill someone. He pukes and freshens up, and we get some really trippy visual effects. Yeah, you're probably gonna hear me say that a lot in this video. It turns out that Daniel was seeing those visuals while passed out. His partner, Mitchell, reaches the hospital and tells him about the earlier bloodbath at the house James had just escaped from. He goes on to give Daniel shit for shooting Beverly and takes his firearm. Daniel goes to call it in, but there's an issue with the phones. He goes to get his car, but the radio isn't working there either. He sees the weird triangle dude in the white robe. Oh shit, what's happening? The lights go out and the guy stabs him. Well, now there's like 10 of them. What are those things? They're kind of like the eyes wide shut kind of cult thing, right? Daniel manages to push the guy away and gets back inside the hospital. Can this seriously get any weirder now? Oh man, I spoke too soon. What the hell's happening there with Beverly? Okay, I gotta focus now. Allison tries to keep Daniel awake, and he passes out for a while to give us some foreshadowing through another set of trippy visuals. He wakes up and goes to check on the scene outside. Those cult dudes are just creepily standing there. 
Suddenly, they hear James screaming like a madman, so Daniel and Mitchell go to check up on him. Oh my freaking god, what an abomination is that Lovecraftian creature? You can really see the inspiration of this creature design coming from the thing. The effects are absolutely amazing considering they aren't CGI, and this is just a low budget movie, I freaking love it. The officers manage to get James out of the room and lock the Beverly creature inside. Yeah right, like that's gonna work. To make things worse, the father and son duo from the opening scene break in and James holds Maggie hostage. Chaos follows, Richard gets stabbed by James and people are just screaming. Oh great, the Beverly creature grabs Mitchell and takes him away too. This is way too much information to process. Daniel and the father-son duo try to save Mitchell, but that just doesn't work out. He gets killed off rather easily. Oh man, I can't stress how much I love the effects and all the lights going on in this scene. They manage to kill the monster with a shotgun and a couple of The Shining inspired axe strokes after a really long struggle. Yeah, destroy that icky blob you bastards. Oh man, that was seriously disgusting and gory. I repeat, this movie is not messing around. Here's another confrontation that creates a lot of conflict. The father is acting like a serious asshole, but Dan gets him to agree that they need to get the hell out of here. Maggie starts to face pregnancy problems, and the father just acts like a jerk again. Seriously man, calm your misogynist ass down. Allison needs to go to the med supply room to help Maggie, and Daniel argues with her, but eventually agrees to it as she follows him to accompany her. He successfully reasons with the psycho father and his son to help him get his shotgun from his police car. After building up some eerie atmosphere, the three of them go for it. Meanwhile, Allison decides to go to the med room by herself after looking at Maggie's condition. Daniel and the others look for a shotgun, and one of the cult guys shows up again. Allison picks up some supplies, but wait a second, the doctor is alive. Well, anything is possible with this movie, I guess. Back in the car, the son gets cut, but Daniel kills one of the cultists, and the three of them get back into the hospital. Yay, he's not too pleased when he finds out that Allison went to the supplies room without him. As they search for her, the father reveals to Daniel that the rest of the family was killed by these cultists. Yep, sorry to break it to you there, Danny boy, but your darling wife might not be getting a happy ending. The phone rings, but guess who's on the other side? Yep, it's Richard, and we find out that the bastard has been behind this whole thing all this time. He tells Daniel that the visions that he's been having while he's passed out are not random, and that he can offer him something much better. What, like the shit that happened with Beverly? No thanks, Doc. Ugh, just look at that cult book and those weird photos too. Looks like a scene straight out of society. This guy's got some serious issues. Richard taunts Daniel about his dead kid, and then he says something like he's got a plan in mind to help all of them. <laughs> no thank you. Daniel has had enough and he gets the father and son to help him extract information from James. He reveals that he knew Richard was the bad guy all along. Well, why didn't you say that earlier? He also says that he was led to him by that burnt girl. But with the promise of drugs. But it turned out to be one of those freaking religious sex cults and the doctor had the power to transform the members of its community. Once again, this information could have come pretty handy earlier in the day. <laughs> Anyway, the three musketeers take James with them and leave Kim with Ben and Maggie to care for the baby if shit goes south. They go to the basement with the help of Kim's navigation, and man, this basement is seriously creepy to be in a hospital. It's a staircase that leads further downstairs, but it's apparently not supposed to be there. Okay, we're totally entering an alternate dimension right now. In other news, Allison wakes up in an operation room and we can see Richard peeling off his own face as he talks to her about life after death. Yeah, I'm really not surprised at this point. He reminds her of losing her own child, and then remembers his own lost daughter, Susan. Okay, asshole, you really don't need to make this worse for poor Allison. The guys come across a door with a melting triangle sign. Then he'll get some pretty disturbing visions, this time ending with a creepy guy. Regardless, they go through the door. Back in the operation room, Richard continues to blabber some freaky shit about the afterlife and not letting people die. He continues to taunt Allison even more about her dead kid. Dude, come on, man. She pleads with him to zip it, but holy shit, she's got some weird gooey thing inside her belly, and even holier shit, what's wrong with Richard's face? Oh yeah, Maggie starts to bleed too. Good luck with that, Kim. Back in the basement, the guys enter some sort of slaughterhouse and notice some more weird crap. Yeah, that's not good for my appetite. Hey, what is that? Oh, wow. 
That's a super weird zombie monster. And there's a shit ton of them too. Jeez, I had to call my mom for some emotional support after seeing this scene. The father sees a vision of what appears to be his dead wife and goes after her. Wait, what? Just when he thought things could get any stupider, James tries to act funny and attacks Daniel. Come on man, he's on your side. I guess it must be all the meth in his system. Anyway, Daniel escapes and a zombie monster gets a hold of James and gives him what he deserves. <laughs> yeah, kill that little bugger, I never liked him anyway. Okay, maybe don't kill him like that. Christ man, chill. Back upstairs, Kim really can't seem to get through with the C-section and Ben begs her to help his granddaughter. But wait a second, Maggie slits his throat and she has Richard's kid inside her? Dude, what? The cultists enter the hospital and take Maggie with them. Don't worry Kim, they're not interested in you. Maybe just go and find a safe place to hide. The son follows the father and finds himself in what I'm assuming is their home. Man, this is super trippy by the way. The father is talking to the wall and turns back to the son. Then he starts screaming, this is your fault and attacks them. Things aren't looking too good for him, but he manages to use a flare and snaps the raged lunatic out of it. Yeah, you better apologize, you freaking psycho. Daniel finally finds Allison and notices she's pregnant. They share somewhat of a sweet moment, but of course the asshole doctor makes his entry with some weird speech. Oh great, that was just a vision and Allison is revealed to have become a monster too. My god man, I really can't stress how good these effects really are. Richards tells Daniel that he's made her a mother, but he isn't buying into his demented fantasies and kills Allison in an immensely sad and brutal, yet amazingly shot sequence. I know the lighting's pretty dark throughout the film, but there's also a lot of 80s horror influence here and I'm all for it. Daniel is transported to some other place now. There are corpses and huge triangle symbol in front of him. Richard emerges from it and now talks some shit about the stuff that existed before time and how he's gonna defeat death. Suddenly Daniel gets stabbed by Maggie and falls to the floor. Seriously Maggie, what is wrong with you? Whoa, Richard looks pretty ripped and definitely alien-like. He talks to Maggie about necessary sacrifices that also include their disturbing love child. Basically, he's gonna use his weird magical powers and bring his daughter back from the dead through the kid in Maggie's womb. Right, that is some real cult shit right there. Speaking about cults, they're here to watch this religious event too. Richard chants out some lines and opens up the triangle. We are once again blessed with some super trippy visuals after Richard blesses Maggie and apparently transfers his daughter to her body. You know, I'd seriously be laughing right now at how ridiculous the notion of it all is if it wasn't for what follows. Maggie realizes that she's messed up and starts screaming as the baby is torn out of her body. Damn man, what in devil's name is that? That is so wrong. Yeah. That's Richard's dead daughter, all alive again. Crap. I don't know, I've said this so many times, but this creature is literally the best example of practical effects that I've seen in years, and that includes some big budget releases too. As expected, the monster kills the other cult members and gives Daniel the your next look. Lucky for him, the father-son duo comes to the rescue and shoots at the monster. Yeah, it's gonna take more than a shotgun to kill that damn thing. The father gets wounded, and knows that this is the end for him. So he convinces the son to light him up on fire as the monster ruthlessly tears into his body. It hurts all of crafty and spectacle for a bit and this gives the son enough time to get a head start run away. Back to Richard and Daniel, we're taken on an astral trip this time and Daniel interrupts it with an axe blow to Richard. It does nothing and Daniel gets choked. Richard tempts him to let go just so that he can reunite with Allison. Realizing that he's got no other option, Daniel gives it his all and pushes Richards along with him into the void. They vanish into nothingness. The monster chases after the sun as the place starts to collapse and the walls begin to close in. Come on man, get out of there. Man, this is so tense. He escapes and the disgusting abomination gets crushed. Hell yeah, thank god for that. The sun is back at the hospital and everything looks normal again. Oh look, Kim's alive, although she does look a bit murderous. They hug and we get a somewhat happy ending. Wait, no it's not over yet. The trippy visuals continue to grace the screen and we're introduced to this weird alternate world. Hey, Daniel and Allison are together again, that's nice. Okay, there's a huge ass pyramid too, yep, they're screwed. Well, at least they're holding hands, right? And there you go guys, that was The Void recapped by yours truly. Huge shout out to Steven Kostansky and Jeremy Gillespie for pulling off this whole thing, despite their budgetary constraints. 
Anyway, let me know in the comments if you got any good recap suggestions in mind. Also, like, share and subscribe to get notified on our regular updates. If you want to enter my own special cult and support me through Patreon and our membership programs, links in the description below. Till the next one, take care guys.